So after Sungluwe, he left, and he, by this time he was uh, by himself. He went down to, to Bangkok. It's about 1950 by now. And um, he visited one or two monasteries, and then he went to Ayutthaya, which is the, you know, the ancient capital of Thailand. And one of the ancient monasteries there had been, um, been taken over by uh, a Damayut Ajahn called Lumpur Chalue. And uh, they had some kind of connection, I don't know from where. And he ended up spending two pansas, two, quite a long time at that monastery. And uh, very, we know very little about that time. I, it seems that you know, he'd, he'd had some uh, significant developments in his spiritual life, and this was a, a place just to, to sort of um, stabilize it and to develop it further in a place where not wanting to travel around, just a sort of a stable, quiet place in which he could live and practice amongst other meditators. Um, one thing we do know is he got very ill um, and developed this very um, painful swelling in his left side and uh, was seriously, seriously ill. And he decided finally, after taking medicines and not getting better, I think he did take some herbs and so on, he decided to use a Dhamma medicine, again what we call Tamosot. So he, uh, he didn't eat for eight days, just drank water. He didn't sleep for eight nights. And he just meditated for eight days and nights. Uh, and he cured himself. So, um, so uh, boys and girls at home, don't try this. Um, it's <laughs> it's you know, somebody, <laughs> you know, something for, for people who are already very well developed in, in practice. Um, but, uh, Again, you know, this uh, this incredible kind of dedication and, and toughness that he had, and so he left there eventually, and then returned to northeast Thailand once again, and he um, he went to stay in that uh, near that village that I told you about in Yasoton, Batao, and this was the first time he um, he had a community around him. He had the, the novice from, from before, and one or two monks came along, and, and so he became, for the first time, he was like a teacher in a formal setting, and uh, he set a very uh, austere kind of uh, regimen. I mean, life was tough anyway, but uh, they, uh, they practiced all through the night, every night, through the rains retreat, and for, uh, you know, you... Uh, you couldn't um, you couldn't lay down. You could either sit or you could walk, and and so you say we've got to get rid of these ideas of day and night. You know, it's just practice, and uh, and so the people who lived with him, you know, they they had that kind of faith in him and that uh, dedication, and uh, most of them stuck with it. And after one pansar of leading a community, uh, he stayed on, and then the next year he went off on solitary retreat just a couple of kilometers away. I left another monk who, who he trusted, called, called uh, Owen, Rajan Owen, um, as his um, deputy. And he would come every patimoka twice a month for the recitation of the discipline and give a pep talk. and. So the monk said it was like you know these plants that hadn't been watered. You know after they start to sort of wilt and get, and then on the patimok he would come and give a talk, and they get all fired up again. And um, and then that punt side, not only did they have to um, stay up all night, but uh, he said for the third month they could, 